Today we're going to be learning about solving geometry problems involving quadrilaterals. So first let's talk about what quadrilaterals are. A quadrilateral is a two-dimensional shape that has four straight sides and there are a number of different types of quadrilaterals that we can get. We're going to be exploring them in this lesson. So first, before we get onto the different types of quadrilaterals, let's take a look at the sum of the interior angles of a quadrilateral. Now we've really learned about the sum of the interior angles of a triangle, and this is going to be a very similar concept, that just like with a triangle, all triangles, the interior angles add up to 180 degrees. The same concept is going to apply for a quadrilateral, but it just won't be 180 degrees. So first what we're going to do is we're going to draw a quadrilateral. What you can do is you can take a separate piece of paper and a ruler and a pencil and just draw any quadrilateral on your piece of paper. It doesn't have to be a specific type of quadrilateral, it can be any random quadrilateral that you want. Once you've drawn your quadrilateral, you can then cut it out and we're going to, just like we did for the triangle, we're going to stick all the corners together. Okay, so here I've got my quadrilateral, okay, and I'm going to go and cut that out quickly. So try and cut it out as neatly as you can along the lines, otherwise this won't work as well as it should. There we go. Okay, so now once you've cut out your quadrilateral, I want you then to label all of the angles in that quadrilateral A, B, C and D. So inside the angles you're going to write the letters A, B, C and D and now you're going to take it and you're going to tear off each of those corners. So there's my A, then I've got my B, then C, and finally D. Now once you've got all four of your corners, what I want you to do is I want you to take your glue and I want you to stick them down so that they are all fitted nicely together. So I'm going to put A like this. Okay, it could go any way, it doesn't really matter which way I do it. Then I'll take B and I'm going to stick it with my glue so that it lies exactly next to A like that. Then I'm going to do the same thing with C. Over here. And then with D over here. And you should find that they fit together perfectly like that so that there is no open space left over. What this means is that if we take this as our point, then if we add up all of those together, we get what we call a revolution or a full circle, okay, a full rotation. So if I take all of the angles of a quadrilateral, and remember I just did any random quadrilateral, and if you do a completely different quadrilateral to me, you should get the exact same result. So if I take all of the angles of my quadrilateral and I add them together, so if I say angle A, if let me just do this quickly, so let's just draw a quadrilateral quickly. So if I have quadrilateral A, B, C, D, like this, A, B, C, D, then angle A plus angle B plus angle C plus angle D is equal to a full revolution which is 360 degrees. Okay, so this is something that I can use if I'm having to work with the angles in a quadrilateral to be able to work out what one angle is and so on. Okay, so our reason for this would be just like we had for the triangles if we're working with the sum of the interior angles of a triangle, here we're going to have the sum of the interior angles of the quad for quadrilateral A, B, C, D. And just like we did for triangles, we have to name what quadrilateral we're talking about. So in this case it is quadrilateral A, B, C, D. 
Okay, so that is the interior angles of a quadrilateral. They always will add up to 360 degrees. Doesn't what, matter what type of quadrilateral you're working with, it will always add up to 360 degrees. Okay, now in our last lesson, we learned how to do the constructions of different quadrilaterals. And when you do the constructions, you would hopefully be able to see that there are certain things that come out of that, certain properties of those quadrilaterals. So let's just go through those properties quickly. So over here, I've got the different quadrilaterals that we constructed. We've got the parallelogram, we've got the rectangle, the rhombus, the square, the trapezium, and the kite. Okay, so now first of all, remember that the the parallelogram, the rectangle, the rhombus, and the square were all related to each other because these three are actually all parallelograms. Okay, so let's quickly have a look at what our properties are for a parallelogram. Okay, so a parallelogram, when we were constructing it, it was two pairs of opposite sides that were parallel. That is the definition of a parallelogram, that you have two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. So here, in this first section, where I'm talking about parallel sides, for a parallelogram, I've got two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. Now, if you were to take that parallelogram and measure the lengths of the sides, you would find that there are two pairs of opposite sides that are equal to each other as well. Okay, the sides that are parallel are also equal in length. And if you were to measure the angles, you would find that two pairs of opposite angles are equal to each other as well. Then, if we go and look at the rectangle, now remember the rectangle is a parallelogram as well, so it's going to have the same properties as a parallelogram. So it also has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel to each other. And it also has two pairs of opposite sides equal to each other. Okay, but a rectangle doesn't just have two pairs of opposite angles equal, which it does have, but a rectangle is special because it also has all angles equal to each other over there as well. Okay, so I can also fill in that one as well as the property that is the same as a parallelogram because remember, it is the same as a parallelogram. Okay, because a rectangle is a special kind of parallelogram. Right, then we're going to go on to the rhombus. Now the rhombus, again, is also a special kind of parall parallelogram, which means it's going to also have the same properties of a parallelogram. So it also has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel to each other. For a rhombus, though, it's special because it has all sides equal to each other, not just the opposite sides that are equal to each other. So I can fill this one in over here as well, saying that a rhombus has all sides equal, but it does still have two pairs of opposite sides equal. And I can also say that it has two pairs of adjacent sides equal because remember adjacent means next to each other. So if you look at the rhombus, then the sides that are next to each other are equal because all of the sides are equal. Okay. And then I also have, just like I had for the parallelogram, two pairs of opposite angles that are equal to each other. Next, we've got the square. Now, the square, once again, is another special kind of parallelogram, but it's actually even more than that. A square is kind of like taking a rectangle and a rhombus and squashing them together. It makes, if you take the, pro the properties of a rectangle and the properties of a rhombus and you put them together, you get the square. A square is a parallelogram, so it has the two pairs of opposite sides parallel to each other. But it also has, just like a rhombus, it has all sides equal to each other, as well as the two pairs of opposite sides equal and the two pairs of adjacent sides equal. So it has the same properties as a rhombus in terms of the length of its sides, but then it also has the same properties as a rectangle in terms of its angles. So a square also has all 90 degree angles, and we can also say that it has two pairs of opposite angles equal to each other because it is also a parallelogram. So that's our rectangle, rhombus, and square, which are special kinds of parallelograms. Then we get on to our trapezium. Now the trapezium is quite different. It is not a special kind of a parallelogram. In fact, the trapezium, we can only say that it has one pair of opposite sides parallel to each other. In terms of the lengths of the sides, some trapeziums might have si some sides that are equal to each other, but that is not one of their characteristics. It's not one of their properties. It doesn't have to, a trapezium doesn't have to have 
equal sides in order for it to be a trapezium. So over here, I can say no sides equal. That's not, it's not a requirement for it to be classified as a trapezium. And then in terms of our angles, the same thing, you can have some angles that are equal to each other, but it's not a requirement. Okay, and then for a kite, we can say that a kite has no sides that are parallel to each other. This is the only one that, is, that doesn't have any pairs of parallel sides. In terms of the lengths of the sides, a kite has got two pairs of adjacent sides that are equal in length. And in terms of the angles, a kite has got one pair of opposite angles that are equal. Okay, so those are the properties of the different types of quadrilaterals that we can get. Remember, a rectangle, a rhombus, and a square are all special kinds of parallelograms. So they all have the properties that a parallelogram has, but they have other properties as well because they're special. Then we've got the trapezium, which only has one pair of opposite sides parallel, and we have the kite, which has two pairs of adjacent sides that are equal in length. Okay. Now let's go and have a look at the quadrilateral family tree. Okay, so the quadrilateral family tree is just a way of structuring and looking at the relationships between the different types of quadrilaterals. So you can see over here, you've got just an, any quadrilateral. If you take that, you can either get two like families out of that. You can get kites, and then you can, which have no parallel sides, or if you have a pair of parallel sides, you can get trapezium. If you take the other two sides and you make them parallel as well, then you get the parallelogram. Then if you take the parallelogram and you make the angles equal, or all the angles 90 degrees, you get a rectangle, but if you make all the sides equal, you get a rhombus. And if you take these two and you squish them together and you put the, the 90 degree angles with the equal sides from a rhombus, you end up with a square. What I want you to do now is I want you to go and take this diagram this family tree, and I want you to fill in the properties of the different shapes in this diagram. So you're going to show the equal angles, you're going to show the parallel lines, you're going to show the equal sides. Okay, so I'm going to give you five minutes to complete that.
Okay, so let's see how you did with that. Okay, so over here I have got my quadrilateral family tree and we are going to fill in the information. Now I'm going to start off by filling in the information about all of the parallel sides in the different shapes. So first of all, looking at the kite, remember the kite had no pairs of parallel sides. So I'm not going to fill anything in there. Then I have my trapezium. The trapezium has one pair of sides that are parallel. So I'm going to indicate that like that. Remember when you're indicating parallel sides, then you use arrows to show it. Then the parallelogram has got two pairs of, of opposite sides that are parallel. So I'm going to have over here a pair that is parallel. And then I also have this pair that are parallel over there as well. Okay. Then if we go down over here to the rectangle, the rectangle is another kind of parallelogram. So it is going to also have the same parallel line structure as what we had for the parallelogram. So I'm going to have two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel to each other like that. Same thing for the rhombus and for the square. Okay, so remember these are all types of parallelograms so they're all going to have the two pairs of opposite sides parallel just like a parallelogram has. Okay, now let's go and have a look at our equal sides in the different shapes. So a kite has got two pairs of adjacent sides that are equal to each other. So these two sides are going to be equal in length and these two sides are going to be equal in length. So that's what a kite looks like. You have two pairs of sides that are next to each other, that are adjacent to each other, and they are equal in length. Then we've got in a trapezium, there are no sides that have to be equal in length in order for this to be classified as a trapezium. Then we're going to go on to our parallelogram and the parallelogram family over here. We've got in a parallelogram, two pairs of opposite sides that are equal in length. So that will be equal to that. And this will be equal to that. A rectangle is exactly the same as that. Okay. Also two pairs of opposite sides that are equal in length. A rhombus and a square also have that, but they're a little bit more special because it's not just opposite sides are equal, all of the sides are equal in a rhombus and a square. So I can say that this side is equal to that side and that side and that side. And for a square, the same thing. This side is equal to that side and that side and that side. So the opposite sides are still equal, just like they were for a parallelogram, but they're also equal to the adjacent sides. When we have a rhombus, we can say that so long as it is a parallelogram that has one pair of adjacent sides equal, it means that all of the sides will be equal. And the same thing happens with a square as well. Okay, so those are all the sides, the lengths of the sides. Now let's take a look at the angles in the different shapes. Okay, so for a kite, the only thing I can say for a kite that has to be true is that I have one pair of opposite, opposite angles that is equal. So this angle will be equal to that angle. It's the angle between the two sides that are not equal in length. So this side is not equal to that length. So the angle made by those two sides is equal to the other angle that is between two sides that are not equal in length and they will be opposite each other. So those two angles are equal in length. In a trapezium, we don't know anything about the angles that is required for it to be a trapezium. The only requirement for a shape to be a trapezium is it has to have one pair of opposite sides parallel to each other. In a parallelogram, if you measure this, the angles in a parallelogram, you will find that this angle is equal to that angle and this angle is equal to that angle. Two pairs of opposite angles are equal to each other. The same thing for a rhombus over here. This angle is equal to the opposite angle and this angle is equal to the opposite angle. Okay. Now a rectangle is also the same except that it's special because the angles are 90 degrees. So when I have my opposite angles, they are equal to each other, but then these angles will also be 90 degrees which means that they are all equal to each other and they're all equal to 90 degrees. And the same thing is true for a square as well. So all four angles are 90 degrees like that. Okay. So that's what your family tree should look like for your quadrilaterals, where you have all of the properties that are indicated on the different shapes.
Okay, so now let's have a look at if we are asked to identify parallelograms or the other quadrilaterals as well, what conditions do you need to have in order to be able to identify a shape or a quadrilateral as a particular type of quadrilateral? So if you want to identify a quadrilateral as a parallelogram, one of these four things has to be true. Either you have to be able to say that all four or there are two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel to each other. So you have to either be told that they're parallel or you have to be able to prove that they're parallel. Or you have to be able to say that there are two pairs of opposite sides that are equal to each other. Again, they can either give you that information or you might need to prove that they are equal to each other. Another way is to prove that you have two pairs of opposite angles that are equal to each other. So again, they can give you that information or you can prove it and then use that to determine the fact that it is a parallelogram. And over here, the last way is to say that if I have one pair of opposite sides, which is both parallel and equal, then I can say that it is a parallelogram. So these are all four ways of proving that you have that the quadrilateral you have is a parallelogram. Okay. Then if you want to prove that a quadrilateral is a rectangle, all of these, remember the rectangle, the rhombus and the square, they are all special kinds of parallelograms. So you first need to prove that they are parallelograms before you can prove that they are a rectangle, a rhombus, or a square. Okay, so using the methods that you had over here to prove that it's a parallelogram, along with, for a rectangle, the fact that you have a 90 degree angle, or for a rhombus, the fact that you have adjacent sides that are equal, or for a square, the fact that you have a 90 degree angle and that the adjacent sides are equal. Okay, so for these, because they are special kinds of parallelograms, we first prove that it is a parallelogram, and then we can prove that it is a rectangle or a rhombus or a square if it has the extra characteristic, the extra property of a right angle or adjacent sides that are equal or adjacent sides that are equal and a right angle. Okay, so that's proving that a quadrilateral is a rectangle, a rhombus or a square. And then finally, if we want to prove that a a quadrilateral is a kite, then you need to prove that you have two pairs of adjacent sides that are equal in length. So those two are equal and they're adjacent and those two are equal and they're adjacent. Again, they can give you that information or you can be expected to prove that or to determine that based on other information that they give you. And then over here, I've got a trapezium. And for a trapezium, you just have to prove or know that one pair of opposite sides is parallel. Okay, so that is how you're going to go about identifying the different shapes that you have. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some time. I want you to try and identify each of the shapes in these examples over here. So I'm going to give you five minutes to try and identify with reasons what type of quadrilateral you've got in each of these examples.
Okay, so let's see how you did with each of those. So if you look at this first one over here, you've been told you've got this line, which is parallel to that line, and this side is parallel to that side. So that helps us to know that we have two pairs of opposite sides parallel, which means that this is a parallelogram. Okay, then we've also been told that I have these two sides that are equal to each other. So this is adjacent sides that are equal. So this means that because I've got adjacent sides equal, this must be not just a parallelogram, but it is a rhombus. So for question A, you should have got that this is a rhombus. And our reason for this is that there are two pairs of opposite sides parallel. That helps us to know that this is a parallelogram. Now remember, when you're proving that something's a rhombus, you have to first prove that it's a parallelogram, and then you can prove that it's a rhombus by saying, in addition to this, we also have two adjacent sides, or one pair of adjacent sides that are equal. So it's two pairs of opposite sides are parallel, and one pair of adjacent sides equal and that means that this shape is a rhombus. So for question A, you should have got a rhombus, and this is the reason that you should have. This reason tells us that it's a parallelogram, and then this reason means that it's not just a parallelogram, it's a special parallelogram because it has a pair of adjacent sides equal, which means that it is a rhombus. Okay, so that's what you should have got for question A. Then question B, we have got in this one over here, a shape that looks like a parallelogram, but you need to be careful. When you are doing things like this, you can't just go on what a shape looks like. You have to go on the information about that shape that you have been given, because shapes in geometry, things will not necessarily always be drawn to scale. They will not necessarily always be drawn accurately. So just because something looks like a parallelogram does not necessarily mean that it is a parallelogram. You can't make an assumption based on what it looks like. You have to use the information you've been given. And in this information, or in this example, we have only been given information about these two sides, which are parallel to each other. We do not have information that tells us, and we have no way of proving that these two sides are parallel to each other, which means we can only go on the fact that there is one pair of opposite sides that is parallel, which means that this is a trapezium. As far as we know, this is a trapezium. So for this one, I'll say it's a trapezium. And my reason is that there is one pair of opposite sides parallel. Okay, I can't say that it's a parallelogram because I have not been told that those other two sides are parallel and we and I have no way of proving that they are parallel either. Okay, question C. Now in this one, again, similar to question B, this one looks like it could be a rectangle, but just like I had in this one, I can't make assumptions. This angle might not be 90 degrees. It might either not be drawn to scale they might not be drawn accurately, or it might be so close to 90 degrees that it looks like it, but it actually isn't. Okay, I have not been given that information, so I can't make an assumption. I have to use the information that I do have, which is that these two sides are parallel and those two sides are parallel, which means I can say that this is a parallelogram based on the fact that I have two pairs of opposite sides parallel. I cannot assume that this is a rectangle. Okay, so for question C, this is a parallelogram. And my reason is two pairs of opposite sides parallel. Okay, the next one. Question D. Now in this one, this might look funny to you. It looks kind of like an arrowhead or something. We've got two sides over here that are, we've been told are the same length. And these two sides over here are also the same length. Now, this doesn't look like your traditional kite, okay? But it is still a kite because it, it has the properties that we know a kite is supposed to have. We've been told that we have these two sides which are adjacent to each other are equal in length. And these two sides which are also adjacent to each other are equal in length. So I have got two pairs of adjacent sides which are equal in length. So even this, though this doesn't look like a traditional kite, it is still a kite. 
Okay, so for question D, we can say that, that is a kite, and our reason is two pairs of adjacent sides equal. Okay, then question E. In this one over here, I've been told that this side is parallel and equal to that side. That is one of the ways of proving that a shape is a parallelogram. So this one is a parallelogram. I know that I have one pair of opposite sides that is both parallel and equal. So for question E, that is a parallelogram. And my reason is one pair of opposite sides parallel and equal. And then the last question, here we have got a shape that looks like it could be a square, okay, but we can't assume it's a square unless we have enough information to tell us that. So let's have a look. First we need to be able to prove that this is a, is a parallelogram. So over here I have been told that those are parallel and these are parallel. So that means this is a parallelogram because I have got two pairs of opposite sides parallel. Then if you look over here I've been told that these two sides which are adjacent to each other are equal in length. Okay so that could mean that it's a rhombus because it's a parallelogram with adjacent sides equal in length. And then I've also been told that this is 90 degrees. Okay now if I hadn't been told that those are equal, then it could be a rectangle. But because I've got that these are equal and I've got a 90 degree angle over here, it means that this is a square. It's a parallelogram that has a 90 degree angle and adjacent sides that are equal in length. Okay, so this one is a square. First, I knew that there were two pairs of opposite sides parallel. That told me that it was a parallelogram. Then I looked and I saw, okay, I've got a 90 degree angle and I've got two sides that are adjacent to each other that are equal in length. So I've got two or one pair, let's put it over here, one pair of adjacent sides equal and I also have a 90 degree angle. And putting all three of those things together is what makes this a square. Okay, so that's what you should have got for each of those examples. Now let's go and have a look at solving some problems with geometry that actually have quadrilaterals in them. We're going to have to use these properties that we have been learning about to actually solve the problems. Okay, so the, the first example we're going to do is this one over here. We have to determine the values of the unknowns in this diagram over here. So we have got an unknown side labeled A. We need to work out the, the value of A. We also need to work out the value of X, which is there and there. And we have to work out the value of Y and the value of Z. Okay, now in order to do this, we are going to have to determine what type of quadrilateral this is. But first, let's go and see if we can find out what A is over here. Okay, so we're going to start off by working out A in this diagram over here. Now, if you look in the diagram, the only other length of a side that I have is AD, which is 6 centimeters. I need to work out A, which is the length of AB. Now, A is in the same quadrilateral as AD, but it's also in the same triangle as AD. So if you look over here at this triangle, I've been told that this angle, ABD, is the same size, it's X, which is also the size of ADB in that triangle. Now we learned when we were doing the triangle section that when you've got a triangle with two angles that are the same length, that means that the sides opposite those angles Will be, or when you have two angles that are the same size, then the sides opposite those angles will be the same length, which means that it will then be an isosceles triangle. So in this triangle over here, I can say that AB, which is A, is the same as AD, which is six centimeters. I can say that A is equal to six centimeters, 
And my reason for that is because in this triangle ABD, angle ABD is equal to angle ADB. Okay, so now I know that this over here is 6 centimeters. And remember, whenever you've worked something out, you can then go and write it on your diagram. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try and work out the size of X. Now, I've got X over here and I've got X over there in the triangle ABD where I, had, I know the value of, or the size of angle A, which is 128 degrees. So I'm going to use the interior angles of that triangle to work out the value of X. So I've got X plus x plus 128 degrees equals 180 degrees and the reason that I'm going to that I can say that is because of the sum of the interior angles of triangle ABD now I can go and solve that equation so I have x plus x equals 180 degrees minus 128 degrees so therefore 2x is equal to 52 degrees so therefore X is equal to 26 degrees so now I know that this over here is 26 degrees and this is also 26 degrees and I can put those on there just in case they can help me later on now the next thing I have to work out is the size of angle Y now angle Y I can't use the angles of this triangle to work out the angle Y in terms of triangles because the, what we've learned about triangles is the interior angles of a triangle and the exterior angle of a triangle. Now this angle is not inside that triangle so that's not going to help me and it's not an exterior angle of that triangle either because it's not made by one of these sides being extended so that's not going to help me either and I don't know any angles inside the triangle that Y is in so the only way I can work out Y is if I use the quadrilateral that Y is in. So what I need to do now is I need to work out what kind of quadrilateral this is because if I know what kind of quadrilateral it is I can then use the properties of that quadrilateral to be able to work out the angles in the quadrilateral. So I'm going to look at the quadrilateral ABCD and I'm going to try and determine what kind of quadrilateral this is. So first when I look at this quadrilateral I can see that they've told me AD and BC are parallel to each other and AB and CD are parallel to each other. So that is two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. That means that this quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Also, I have now worked out that this side is equal to that side and they are both six centimeters, which means that those are adjacent sides. That means that this is not only a parallelogram, it is a rhombus. So now I can say that quadrilateral ABCD is a rhombus. And the reason I know that, first I had to prove that it was a parallelogram and I, I could do that because I have two pairs of opposite sides parallel. And once I knew that it was a parallelogram, because I've got two adjacent sides that are equal to each other, I can then say it's a rhombus. So that is one pair of adjacent sides equal. So that's how I know that this is rhombus. And now because I know it's a rhombus, I can use the properties of a rhombus. Okay, so now in a rhombus, opposite angles are equal to each other because a rhombus is a parallelogram and that is one of the properties of a parallelogram. So my opposite angles will be equal. That means that Y is equal to 128 degrees. So now I can say Y equals 128 degrees. And my reason for that is because the opposite angles of a rhombus are equal. But I have to specify what rhombus I'm talking about. So it's rhombus A, B, C, D. So opposite angles of rhombus A, B, C, D are equal. Opposite angles of rhombus A, B, C, D are equal. So now I can go and fill that in on my diagram. So that is 128 degrees. Okay, the next thing I need to do is I need to work out Z. Now Z is sitting over here. What I can do is I can use this triangle. I now know that angle in the triangle. I know that this is Z. 
I don't know yet what this is, but I do know that this is a rhombus. And another one of the properties of a rhombus is that opposite, or all the, all the sides actually, are equal in length. That means that CD is going to be equal to BC, which means that this is going to be an isosceles triangle. And that will help me to work out the size of Z. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use the property of a rhombus that all the sides are equal to say that CD is equal to BC. So CD equals BC, and my reason for that is because it is a rhombus. It's the all sides of a rhombus. In this case, it is rhombus ABCD are equal. Okay, so now I can go and fill that information in here. I can say that is equal to that. I just said that CD is equal to BC, so CD is equal to BC. Those are equal. Now, because those are equal, I can now say that this is an isosceles triangle, which means that this angle over here will also be Z because it is opposite my equal sides. These are my equal sides over here. The angles opposite them will be equal. So if this one is Z, that will also be Z. So now I can say that angle CBD equals Z. And my reason for that is because it's an isosceles triangle CBD or BCD with BC equal to CD. Okay, so now I know that this is Z and we can fill that in over here. So now we've got a triangle where we've got Z and Z and 128 degrees. And I need to go and work out the, the value of Z using the interior angles of the triangle. So now I can say Z plus Z plus 128 degrees equals 180 degrees. And my reason for that is because of the sum of the interior angles of triangle BCD. And then I can go and solve that equation. So that is Z plus Z equals 180 degrees minus 128 degrees. So 2Z is equal to 52 degrees. So therefore, Z is equal to 26 degrees. So that's how you work out the value of Z. So remember, whenever you are doing a geometry question, you always have to give a reason for every single statement that you give. So in this case, my first statement was that A is six centimeters. How did I know that? I knew that because this is an isosceles triangle because they told me that both of those angles are X. Next, I have got over here, x plus x plus 128 degrees equals 180. That was how I was going to work out the value of x. How did I know that? How did I get to that equation? Because I know that the sum of the interior angles of any triangle is 180 degrees. Then, how did I know that ABCD is a rhombus? I needed to work that out so that I could then work out the other angles. But how did I know it was a rhombus? I knew it was a rhombus because I had two pairs of opposite sides that were parallel and I had a pair of opposites of adjacent sides that was equal. Over here, I knew that if I have a rhombus, then opposite angles are equal. That's how I knew that Y would be 128 degrees. Then I know that in a rhombus, all sides are equal. That's how I knew that these two sides would be equal, which means that this is going to be an isosceles triangle, which will help me to work out Z. So then I was able to say, because it's an isosceles triangle, angle CBD is also Z. And then because I know that there is, it's also Z, I can use the interior angles of a triangle, giving my reason that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees to get my equation that will allow me to solve for Z. So every single statement that I make when I'm doing a calculation like this or solving a problem like this, I have to give a reason for every single statement. Okay, so now I'm going to give you a couple that you're going to work on for yourself. Here's the first one that you're going to do. So in this question, you need to work out the value of X. Okay, you've been given a quadrilateral A, B, C, D, and you need to work out the value of X. So I'm going to give you two minutes to complete this problem.
Okay, so let's see how that went. So in this question, we have got quadrilateral A, B, C, D, where angle A is X, angle B is 2X, angle C is X plus 20 degrees, and angle D is 2X plus 10 degrees. So first, I need to, I don't need to work out what type of quadrilateral this is, because I'm just going to use the interior angles of a quadrilateral and say, because I know that the interior angles of a quadrilateral must add up to 360 degrees, I can work out what X is going to be. So I'm just going to add up all the angles and make it equal to 360. So I've got X plus 2X plus X plus 20 plus 2X plus 10. And that all adds up to 360 degrees. And the reason that I can say that is because the sum of the interior angles of quad A, B, C, D must be 360 degrees. So that is my reason over there. Now I'm going to go and solve that equation. So that gives me x plus 2x plus x plus 2x equals 360 degrees minus 20 degrees minus 10 degrees that is 6x equals 330 degrees so therefore x is equal to 55 degrees so that's what you should have got for x in that example okay so I'm going to give you one more that you're going to do for yourself in this question you've got quad a b c d you need to work out the size of a b and c and I'm going to give you two minutes again to solve this problem. Okay, so let's go through that example. So in this question, you had a quadrilateral ABCD, and you have been told that AD is parallel and equal to BC. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do for this one is we need to identify what type of quadrilateral this is, and based on what they told me over there, I know that this is a parallelogram. Now, they haven't given me any other information that helps me to know if it's a rhombus or anything like that, so all I can say is that this is a parallelogram. So ABCD is a parallelogram. And the reason I know that is because I have one pair of opposite sides that is both parallel and equal. Okay. Because I know that this is a parallelogram, I can now use the properties of a parallelogram to work out the value of A, B, 
and C. So first let's have a look at A. Now in a parallelogram, opposite angles are equal. So if angle B over here is 60 degrees, then A, which is opposite angle B, must also be 60 degrees. So I can say A equals 60 degrees, and my reason for that is going to be because I know that the opposite angles of a parallelogram In this case, it is parallelogram A, B, C, D are equal. Okay, so now I know that this is 60 degrees over there. The next thing I need to do is work out B. Now, to work out B, I'm going to have to use the interior angles of my quadrilateral over here. But in order to do that, I need to have something at this angle over here. Now, I know again that opposite angles are equal. So if this is B, then this angle A over here must also be equal to B. So angle A equals B. And again, the reason is opposite angles of a parallelogram A, B, C, D are equal. Okay, so that means that I can now put in over here that this is B. Okay, because I now know that I've got B there, B there, 60 degrees and 60 degrees, I can now use the interior angles of a quadrilateral and say I know that in any quadrilateral, the interior angles must all add up to 360 degrees. So B plus B plus 60 degrees plus another 60 degrees must equal 360 degrees. And my reason is the sum of the interior angles of quadrilateral a, B, C, D must all add up to 360 degrees. Okay, and then I can go and solve my equations. Now I can say B plus B equals 360 degrees minus 60 minus 60, and that gives me 2B equals 240 degrees, so therefore B is equal to 120 degrees. And that I can fill in here. It's not really going to help me, but I can fill it in if I want to. Okay, then the last thing I need to do for this question is I need to work out the value of C. Now again, I'm going to be using the property of a parallelogram, knowing that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal to each other, I now know that because this is a parallelogram, I can say that C must be equal to 5 centimeters. And my reason for being able to say that is because the opposite sides of parallelogram A, B, C, D are equal to each other. And that is how you solve that problem. And that is how we solve problems in geometry with quadrilaterals. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.